Okay, so I'm going to talk about Queen Elizabeth, but I thought uh, before I got on to the subject, I will talk a bit about the history of, a uh, bit of history of Sri Lanka, of the monarchies from the beginning. So we started in 1796 under the British East India Company, and we were part of the Madras Presidency. And uh, if if not for a decision by the, to, uh, for Britain to take us under the crown directly in 1802, I think we would have become like Tasmania, a small island uh, off the coast of a bigger country called India. Uh, you, Britain took, out, took the whole country over in 1815. We got independence in 1948 and became a republic in 1972. In 1797, we, did, we had basically used uh, Indian uh, of British East India Company coins. And in 1802, uh, the Britain decided that Ceylon should be taken directly under the crown. Now, why they did that is very interesting. I think reflected in this uh, cartoon, which I got from the British Museum, dated 1803. It has a picture of, I don't uh, recognize all these politicians of that era, but there was one looking through a telescope at the star of Ceylon rising in the, on the horizon. And these guys are hoping to get power, titles, honors, rewards, government places, pensions, and wealth. So clearly England saw Ceylon as a asset for them in 1803 and the reason why they took Ceylon directly under their control. We had coins and we represented the monarchy with an elephant in Ceylon. We didn't want to use his picture. We, you, even this in 1808, we had an elephant, no, no monarchy. And the monarchy was not represented except in, on the currency note, it was shown as Britannia. Britannia who rules the wave, a trident in one hand with the uh, shield and an olive branch in the other hand. So which was basically saying that Britain came in war and peace to, to take over the colonies. In 1815, the whole country came under the British and then we decide, uh, they decided to put George III on the coins with the elephant uh, still there on the reverse. George IV came in also with the elephant. Then in 18, up to 1825, we used Rix dollars. In 1825, we switched to using British currency. So by the time William came, it was the standard British um, half farthing coin with Britannia on one side. Uh, Victoria came in, quarter farthing. Quarter farthing was never issued in England. They thought it was too small, but they thought of issuing it for Ceylon because we were sort of a primitive country which needed smaller currency coins. 1850 came around, uh, still Britannia on our currency notes, uh, no king on it, king or queen on it. And only difference here was that the Trident has been replaced with a spear. I have no idea why, but that's an interesting observation. The elephant also came back onto the picture. 1870, we had Queen Victoria and he, she was Victoria Queen on our decimal currency, which came in a hundred years before the British. 1877, we still used Indian rupees in Sri Lanka. And Victoria was Empress. It became Empress Victoria in, uh, on the coins of India, not in Ceylon. And, uh, they, but they were actually used in Ceylon. Uh, Edward came in 1902 for, to 1910. He became Edward VII, King and Emperor. If you notice these coins, they face uh, opposite directions when they change kings. Uh, then K then came uh, George V, uh, 1911 to 1929. And after that, 
then they were toying with the idea of putting the king's face on uh, currency notes this note which was a essay done in 1936 uh, or 1935 around that time it has a date of 1936 but unfortunately the king died on the 20th of january 1936 george v died and this note was never issued nor was this other note which was a one rupee note which is also an essay which was dated even later 30th july 1937 those are all pseudo dates when they are drawing these dates with the projected date of issue uh, after that, we didn't have, there were no coins of Edward uh, VIII, but there was this fantasy which was created with an elephant by somebody in 1954 just to have, for the collectors to have a coin with Edward VIII. George uh, VI came around on our currency notes in February of 1941. Again, the elephant on the other side. He loved elephants. Okay, now to get to the topic of, the, of this lecture, uh, Queen Victoria, uh, no, sorry, Queen Elizabeth II with the tiara uh, in, on her head. This tiara was gifted to her grandmother and she got it uh, and inherited it and used it. And this note, uh, which was dated 3rd June, 1952, uh, was in fact the first note in the world to use his her image on a currency note or the first dated note to use a currency note. I really didn't know this story till recently it came to my at uh, attention and I sort of explored the catalogs and found it was true. I asked in various forums and nobody objected and one person actually confirmed that I was correct. So I felt strengthened enough to send this to the Sunday Times and Sunday Times published this image with the story. And then it started circulating on social media quite widely. And it came back to me at least twice. Now this note is very special. It is purple and purple was not is the royal color for the uh, monarchy. But unfortunately, it didn't seem to be a good color to have because the, the then governor, uh, A.J. Ranasinghe, sent a currency note to with the, the servant to the shop and apparently got only two rupees of change. So he decided that purple was mis mistaken color in the dark and he changed the note from uh, purple to red and all our five rupee notes since 1954 have been red primarily in color till they disappeared in 1982. Uh, then um, the, at that same series of point, uh, notes, you, some of you may have been familiar, we had a one rupee, one rupee with, uh, I think, the Queen's uh, Moonstone on the other side. We had the two rupee with Madhirigiriya on the other side. And we had the 10 rupee. Now, the 10 rupee was issued on the 1st of July, 1953. I managed to work out that it was, in fact, the first note to have been issued after she was formally coronated on the 3rd of uh, June, 1953. So here we have the second first, we have the first note to be issued after she became queen and also the first note to be issued after she was coronated in 53. Then there is the 50 rupee note, uh, quite a rare note to have in a collection. And the 100 rupee note, the 100 rupee note, it's a 100 rupees was a lot of money at that time. And both all these notes were issued. Uh, there were six denominations from one rupee to 100 rupees, each issued on two dates. And the first had John J.R. Jawadhanas and John Exter, our first foreign uh, central bank governor we had. 
uh, JR Javadan and NU Javadan has signed after that, and then MDH Javadan as finance minister, and AJ Ranasinghe signed as the go uh, governor of the central bank. They all signed in English while there was a queen uh, on the note. So we had three first. One was the first note uh, after she became queen. Second, we, we had other notes, and then we had the first note uh, to be issued uh, after she became king. And actually, it was also uh, the first country to remove her note from, uh, to remove her from as queen on the notes. Uh, see, I cannot say that this was the first note with her image because she did appear in a Bank of Canada note in uh, 1934 as an 80-year-old Princess Elizabeth. But this does not count as the first time after she became queen. So there are three trivias and actually the third one is the fact that it was the first country to remove the queen also from the currency note. There's another interesting bit of trivia. We only issued a two cent coin with her image. All other uh, uh, monarchs, we have used, uh, issued the full series from one cent to, to one, uh, one rupee, uh, not one rupee, 50 cents at that time. And, but for Elizabeth, for some reason, we didn't want to send issue anything more than a two cent coin. And this was issued in 1955 and 57. And to make matters worse, this 1945 five cents was minted all the way up to 1962 in the Royal Mint with George VI, King and Emperor of India. When, he was, when the monarchy was no longer the emperor of India and the George VI was long dead because Ceylon did not want to use the queen's image on her, her coins. And then we got our first coins only in 1963 with the coat of arms of Ceylon uh, or with Lanka written in the middle. Interestingly, the country name is Lanka here and not Sri Lanka, which is also a bit of trivia. Okay, now another interesting thing I found out, these are, I found out this, uh, pre, uh, this is a drawing which has been done on the uh, week after the, on the 1956, April 19th, a week after SWRD Bandar Nayaka, became prime minister of Ceylon and wanted to remove the queen from the currency notes. So the order went out to them to design a currency note uh, without the queen. And one week after the, she, he became prime minister. And this is the sort of the line rough drawing that they did uh, in April of 56 to design a note. They didn't even have a name for the central bank uh, in Singhala. They called it Lanka Pradhana Bankur. And uh, also interestingly is that they decided to use Tamil at the back of the note, a fair use of Tamil, which was what was proposed. And uh, they, didn't, uh, they didn't use this later, but they did use it in this design that they did of uh, to change over. The change notes were supposed to have either the lion flag, uh, lion with the sword, or the armorial ensign of Ceylon. That was what was proposed. Finally, what was adopted in 1956 after the uh, Single Only Act, which was passed in 1956, July 7th, was this note, which had the armorial ensign uh, replacing the queen, and it had it was dated 1956, 730, which was a month at the end of the month that they approved the thing, and all the English text had been removed and put made into Singhala, and the Singhala uh, that uh, 
English it, uh, the English English text was uh, the singular text was changed to English as uh, saying one rupee. There was no name of the bank or the country appearing in Tamil or English. It only appeared in 1969, 12 years later, when they suddenly realized that they should have a fair use of Tamil and English on the currency notes and added the central bank of Ceylon in Tamil and English on the currency notes. England also very interestingly did not use the queen. There's some reason why they didn't want to use uh, the queer image of the monarch on the currency notes. Uh, the Bank of England only gave permission in 1956 for the queen to be used on the Bank of England currency notes, even though they seem to have given the central bank and the uh, commissioners of currency to use the monarch in currencies in the colonies, uh, they didn't did use it. Uh, the Bank of England got permission only in 1956, and this was the first note to be issued it in 56. Uh, now I will go on a bit of controversy that happened. Everybody didn't seem to like the Queen on the currency notes. And the most famous of it is this devil in the hair note, uh, which this is the portrait of uh, supposedly a devil image hidden in a hair. And this was noted uh, very soon after the note was issued. And the next issue of the next printing of the note, they changed the design of the hairstyle and sort of drew and removed the devil from the note. Collectors love to collect the note with the devil on her hair. There were seashells in 1960, which decided to use a currency note uh, with some hidden letters. There was scum uh, written, hidden among the corals. And if you look carefully, and I have highlighted it here, you see the word scum written. It was hidden in the 10 rupee note with Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, next came the 50 rupee note of that same series. And they had sex written on the side with the coconut trees. And it was a 50 rupee note. These two notes, uh, I don't have them. I got these images long afterwards. They're far too expensive to buy. They are very valuable collector's items. But it does show that now, this sort of, uh, uh, not like in the Queen, I go back to a Ceylon note, just to say that we were not the, they were, that Seychelles was, and Canada was not the only one to protest the monarch, the British rule. This is a, a note of issued in Ceylon somewhere on 1860s, a five rupee note. And it was issued by the Mercantile Bank, Chartered Mercantile Bank of India, London, and China, the Ceylon branch of it. And that very interestingly, instead of writing Rupiah Panahai, which was what five rupees was, they wrote the Singhala as Pakahai. Clearly, I thought that was and must be a, couldn't have been accidental error. Anyway. Uh, it could have been an accidental error, but uh, it was the error was corrected in the next issue of eight, in 19, uh, 1872. And I would have taken this as an error, except for the five that the 10 pound note uh, of the same issue had a CI written as Wakai Pai. Now that couldn't have been accidental. So I think that was corrected soon after, but those other two notes were what was issued and it became CII. So we have had, I think, in our currency notes uh, also and in world currency notes, certain protests against the monarchy. And that does story, uh, interesting story. The singular ones, I think, must have been some disgruntled employer have been asked to translate to singular and having 
some fun against the British uh, English management. So that is a quite an interesting story from the 19th century. Okay, I, that is the end of my uh, thing. And these notes, uh, all these images could be found on coins uh, and notes of, uh, of laktiva.org. And if anybody's interested, we'll find any more. Okay, that's my share. And I will stop with that. <laughs>